Bring your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 11. Very familiar passage of Scripture <coughs> to those who are students of the inspired word. First Corinthians chapter 13. Verse number 11, and I would ask that you would read this one verse aloud with me, please. The Bible says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. May the Lord indeed add a blessing unto those who are the readers and the doers of his holy and his divine will. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Our Father, our God, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy great and thy glorious name. Yes. We're grateful, Father, for this worship privilege. We're grateful that you have granted unto us the ability to be here this day. Yes, Lord. That we might praise and magnify your name. Sure. Father, we come now to receive a word from thee. Yeah. We need thee, Father. Yeah. We need instruction. We need direction. Yeah. Lord God, we need protection. Yes. Bless us this day that we may gather from your word what we need so that we may become better servants of thine. Yes. Bless me as thy messenger, Father. I will impart thy word with simplicity. And bless every heart of the hill that they will be open and receptive to what thou hast to say. Speak unto us, Lord, this day through thy word, and thy children will hear. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, we want to look at this very familiar passage and use it as a base text to talk about our boys to men ministry want to talk this morning from that very subject, boys to men, boys to men. Mm -hmm. Statistics report unto us some alarming figures when it comes to the state of our young men. According to reports from the Census Bureau, the Department of Justice, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the National Center for Health Statistics, 29.4% of African American males born in 1991 will spend some time of their life incarcerated behind bars. Right According to the Disease Control and Prevention Center, the number one cause of death for ages 15 to 24 among black males was not some sexually transmitted disease, but it was homicide. Black men in the United States of America according to the National Center of Health Statistics, have been said to have the shortest life expectancy of 69.5 years of age of all other racial and ethnic groups averaging over six years less than white men who are said to live 75.7 years of age. Mm -hmm. Unemployment among black males is higher than any population amongst us at 14.1%. Over 70% of black children in America are raised by a single parent where there's no father present in the household. When we look at these particular stats and this data, 
for our African American boys and men, not only is it disappointing, but it's also discouraging. In a PBS special, talk show host Tavis Smiley brought awareness to the deplorable state of our young black males in a segment that he entitled, Too Important to Fail. When writer Tamika Thompson reported that behind every face, there is a fact. Behind every statistic, there is a story. Behind every catchphrase, there is a young person whose future will be lost if something is not done immediately to change the state of his or her reality. And when it comes to our young African-American men, not only are the numbers staggering, but the reality is also sobering. Young black men across the board have been reported to score below, below their counterparts in other racial, racial, racial and ethnic groups when it comes to graduation rates, literacy rates, and college preparedness. Because of these low scores, they say that many of our African American men are virtually locked out of employment and are the leading cause of the filler of our nation's prisons and penitentiaries in disproportionate numbers. A report from the Annie E. Casey Foundation which emphasizes the connection between the early childhood literacy and dropout rates. They took a look at the achievement gaps between black and white public school students from the Department of Education in a summary report concerning the newly created African American Male Achievement Task and they looked at it in the Oakland Unified School District and discovered that only 54% of African Americans graduate from high school compared to more than three quarters of their white and Asian counterparts. Nationally, they report that African American male students in grades K through 12 were nearly two times as likely to be suspended from school than white students. In 2007, they reported that nearly 6.2 million young people were high school dropouts, and because of that, every student who does not complete high school among us cost us in our community an estimated 260000 in lost earnings, taxes, and productivity. On an average, they say that African-American 12th grade students read at the same level as 8th grade white students. The 12th grade reading scores of African-American males were significantly lower than those for men and women across other racial and ethnic boundaries. Only 14% of African-American 8th graders scored at or above the proficient level. These results reveal that there are literally millions of our young people that cannot understand nor evaluate a text nor make any relevant details to what they have read to their own lives. They cannot, according to the test, support inferences about the written documents that they read. And they say that the majority of the 2.3 million people incarcerated in U.S. prisons and jails are people of color that have suffered with mental health issues drug addictions, people with low levels of educational attainment and with a history of unemployment or underemployment. Once again, my brothers and sisters, these statistics are both disturbing and they are discouraging. And it makes you sit back and ask some serious questions. Where did we go wrong? What has happened? among us. 
that we have become so complacent with our young men being less than average.